Well, first of all, Kelly, Brian, Han, and I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us today. I, you know, I have, I've had to do public speaking for my career. As a chemist, I travel to conferences, I have to give talks. I've even been best man three times. But this one, this one's a little different. And I've struggled with what to say. And I watched an episode of Nova, and they were talking about the neurological advanced research that they're doing for mapping how the brain works. And there was a section on memory. And when you recall a long-term memory, it's not like a card catalog or a microfiche film that you view. You actually recall it, and the brain has to re-imprint it in the neurons and the synapses. And over time, as you reprogram these memories after you recall them, they embellish, they change. They're not the same. So they're not what you perceived at the time. However, there are exceptions. And they're typically when you have trauma, extreme emotions such as anxiety or joy. And so it got me thinking, what are some memories that I know of memories of Sam, and they can't be from videos, they can't be of pictures, because they don't exist, but they're imprinted, they're indelible, because I remember them, because of the extreme emotion or trauma. <laughs> So the first one I think that I can recall is, it's not the day she was born, it's the day after. And I'm pulling the Intrepid around to the hospital exit, and I distinctly remember Hannah's face and looking at Sam in that car seat, facing backward, and I'm thinking, oh my God, they're just letting, her, letting us take her home. They're, <laughs> Don't they realize we have no idea what we're doing? <laughs> They're just gonna let us take her home. And I, can, I remember the look on Hannah's face and the smile on her face as Sam was in that car seat. The second memory that kind of popped in my brain was the morning of 9-11. So Sam's only about eight months old. I'm at work, the emails start flying, I'm a federal employee. So the emails start flying across the desk and no one understands what's going on. We don't know what's going on. But then they decide to land all the planes, ground them, and they evacuate all federal buildings. And I can't call Hannah. We don't have cell phones at the time. So I go to the daycare where Hannah's working and Sam's attending as a toddler. And I go to the room. And, they're on the, and the kids are just in there playing. And the teacher is on the floor with them. And I'll never forget the look on Sam's face as a little toddler when she saw me at the door, and this is out of routine because I never went and picked her up. She just, she just dropped those toys, looked at me, and just walked right to me. It's like, yeah, we're out of here. <laughs> that, that sticks in my brain. I remember that face like it was yesterday. Um, another memory is her sitting on we had this horrible carpet in the kitchen. And she's sitting there flipping through her picture book, and the book was narrated on a CD by John Lithgow, and it was called Marsupial Su, the, the Young Kangaroo, or whatever it was, and you just sitting there singing as she's flipping the pages. The next memory I wanted to share, she's a little bit older, and she's got her driver's license the day she gets her driver's license. She's got volleyball practice. I'm gonna drive myself to volleyball practice. Okay, it's snowing and it's icy. And I say, text us when you get there. And I know I've driven this stupid route multiple times. I know exactly how long it takes to get there. 20 minutes pass, no text. 25 minutes pass, no text. 30 minutes, no text. Can't get her on the cell phone, I get in the car. I'm, mentally, I'm zero to 10. I'm looking in the ditches. 
as we're going. And I get there, I walk in the vestibule of the big Morton building that they do volleyball practice in, and I see her doing her drills, and I'm looking, I'm trying to get her, and when she turned and looked at me, that look on her face, <laughs> I'll never forget it. She knew she had messed up. <laughs> the next memory I'm gonna share involves Devin. So, Han and I are in Arkansas, at the cabin at the lake, one of our favorite places to go. Our friends own the marina. We're scuba diving. We're heading out on the houseboat. It's our last night. They're smoking ribs, and we're gonna go have our last party before we come home. And I'm packing the cooler. And the houseboat, we're late. We're late for the houseboat. And I'm like, I don't know, let's go, let's go. And she goes, oh my God, oh my God. And she's looking at her phone. And I'm like, and I'm thinking, the daycare's burned down. We've lost a parent, you know, what, what's going on? And she goes, oh, you gotta read this. And she hands me the phone. And I'm looking, I don't recognize the initials. I go, who's this from? She goes, it's, it's from Devin. And it says, are you guys free for lunch on Sunday? I'd like to discuss the future. <laughs> uh, I, I'll never forget the look on Hannah's face. It's like, oh my God, this is, this is for real. <laughs> and then of course, I think the next memory that is going to be indelible and will never leave me is you two looking at each other and saying your vows and handing your hand and giving it to him. That was, that was very special for me. And I, I really hope and wish you the best. And if everybody would please raise your glass, join me in a toast and wish, well, and there it's empty. <laughs> wish Devin and, and Sam the best and best wishes for the future. Thank you. There she is, there she is. All right, the song that Devin has picked to dance with his mother is My Little Man by Brittany Kellogg.
Alright, now Sam, don't go too far because we need your dad, David, to the dance floor. It's David Compton here. Sam and our dad will be dancing to the song Dads and Daughters by Marin Taylor. This is Ed Sheeran with Can't Help Falling in Love. Surely to the sea 